I'm Reverend Jessie Brandon, and you're watching Epiphanies. I'm a life cycle celebrant and a metaphysical ordained minister, and I get to bring my loves together here on Epiphanies, and that is books and people. So with me today is Lori Bertoni, and uh, she merged the world of coaching in her 10 plus years of fitness experience to provide anyone who is struggling or feeling stuck in their mind, body, or soul to break through or heal what's holding them back from living. She is a master NLP practitioner and coach. Lori helps people evaluate their life in 10 areas to find the root cause of their struggle. And she helps them uncover their true purpose and potential so they can live their authentic life. Lori shines her light on people to brighten their way and highlights their magnificence. And on that note, Lori, thank you so much for coming. Thanks so much for having me, Jesse. Yeah, it's terrific to see you. Yeah. So today we're talking about a Yanla Van Zant's book, In the Meantime. Now, this book says, you know where you want to be, but you have no clue how to get there. You know exactly what you want in life, but what you want is nowhere in sight. Perhaps your vision is unclear, your purpose still undefined, and on top of it all, your relationships, particularly your romantic relationships, are failing. If these scenarios sound familiar, way down in the deepest part of your gut, then you, my dear, are smack dab in the middle of the meantime. And on that note, I'll give that to you and ask, <laughs> why did you choose this book? Um, well when we had talked previously and you had asked me if there was a book that had a profound significance in your life or experience or whatever and I didn't even have to hesitate I was like oh I sure do and um, this is the book and this book came into my life at least 10 years ago and <clears throat> it was recommended to me by my sister at the time and I, I must have been going through something where she felt you need to read this book. I don't remember what, because 10 years ago is a long time. I've gone through so much since then. But um, I've read it probably five times at least. Really? Um, I haven't picked it up probably in the last five years, because I lent it out to a friend. <laughs> <laughs> and never lend out your books, people. You never get them back. I was going to ask you what your <coughs> rule is on that. but. I sign them out. Yes, do you? Because okay. I've lost too many good ones. Oh my gosh. So, and it's it's funny, before you even asked me on the show, I reached out to her and I was like, by any chance, like, do you still have my book? Because it's been underlined and highlighted in every pen, different color through every, you know, and every time I read it, I would get something different out of it. Mm -hmm. So ironically, I, I purchased it just yesterday and it was the only copy. So in Barrie, you'll have to order it online or something. Um, <laughs> But uh, it was meant for me again. And so just picking it up again, I just I couldn't help but just start reading it and highlighting it. And it's, it's so amazing. And it talks about going through the your house. And it breaks up your house into uh, kind of four areas. It breaks it up because it's when you're in the meantime, you're kind of in you know, a chaotic stage in life. And people think that this is the worst stage, but the book shows this is the best stage to be in because this is the time where you get to, you know, clean house. Mm -hmm. And it breaks up, you know, your life kind of in a way that allows you to look at if you're in the basement, if you've got basement behavior, you know, then you move up to the first floor and then what kind of the first floor looks like, you know, when you're like able to like open the curtains and dust everything off. And then there's a second floor and there is a third floor. And then there's the attic where you kind of ascend to, you know, godlike love and spirituality and everything else like that. And kind of what you need to do and what you need to work on in your relationships particular. Because she really talks about um, how everything shows up in our relationships. Our relationships ideally are a reflection of our relationship with self, mm -hmm. essentially, right? So when we've got, you know, a lot of stuff going on in our relationships that um, it's just a cue, it's a sign that, you know, um, it's time for a change, it's time for, you know, like, what are you really afraid of? Like, mm -hmm. what's going on? Like, what are you not looking at? So it looks at so many things differently. And so, you know, and it's funny, because when my sister must have recommended it, like, I'm, I'm divorced, married a second time, right? So now picking up this book, I'm like, ah, 
<laughs> Everything's <laughs> great. And you know, when she probably gave it to me, it was probably at a time where I was in a you know a darker place in my marriage, right? In my first marriage, where I was you know doing a lot of projecting, doing a lot of blaming, do a lot, doing a lot of not looking within myself. And so what that what the book really does is it helps you kind of take a look at you know what stuff within you needs to be healed so that you can then you know take the steps to start to kind of lead with love essentially right the book mm -hmm. is all about finding yourself and the love you want because we are the love that we want mm -hmm. right absolutely yeah. uh it's it's just profound i i i recommend it to friends any client that I have, you know, that's, you know, kind of stuck in the meantime, who's, you know, got one foot out the door and like one foot on a banana peel in their marriage or in their relationship that are not ready to make a decision yet because they are, you know, kind of stuck in fear. I'm like, you need to go and read this book. Don't make any decisions. Don't make any decisions. Go read this book. And, you know, the, la the last client I recommended this to, funny, she, she called her partner in the meantime. She's like, you know, in the meantime, <laughs> I was like... <laughs> Well, like yes I, I really really do so yeah definitely you know if you're feeling stuck or lost or just you know um, chaotic in life and just you know you think that you know you don't know where to turn I would really recommend you this book so is it just love relationships or, or, or like self and love relationships or does this give you a look at how you handle all relationships well what happens is is what it Point, it, what it shows you is that you are at the root of everything, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. okay, so even so, let's like just put my coaching hat on for two seconds. Our relationships and our career and business are equivalent. We we deal with our clients, we deal with you know our man, our suppliers, our coworkers, our colleagues, our employees. The same way we deal with relationships, we relationship the same way. Business people are like, oh no, I can leave my stuff at home when I go to work, and I'm like, no, you can't. Energy is energy; it follows you everywhere. So, when you go to work, people think that they can leave their stuff behind, but they can't. If it's running in your head, it's you're still dealing with it. Yeah, right? it's running in your energy. Yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. you're bringing that stuff to work. So whatever's going on in your daily life is affecting your work somehow, mm -hmm. right? So it mm -hmm. doesn't matter. So really. Mm -hmm. And then here's the thing is that it shows up in your relationships, right? Yeah. Everything shows up there. So whether it be your relationships with your spouse, honestly, your relationships with your children, relationships with family members, whoever you're conflicting in, in your relationships, it, they're a mirror. They're just showing you whatever's going on in yourself and mm. it's, you're projecting, right? Wow. I know. It's so profound. So, yeah. you know, when you can take responsibility and be like oh wow what am I doing where am I doing this in my life then you can start to take the, the action steps because we we really can't change other people no no like we, we can we I can expect you know I can expect you to you know change and be a different person to accommodate me but at the end of the day that's never going to happen no right like no. I need to change myself or set boundaries or accommodate you know the people in my life that um or just accept them set boundaries whatever if you need to set boundaries and you know step away from toxic people in your life okay you need to do that but mm -hmm. otherwise they're just showing you what you need to do in your own life right yeah that's amazing. It really is. Is there a particular passage that you could read to us? I th yes, I highlighted already. I'm like, <laughs> what should I share with you guys besides reading the whole book for you? Because <laughs> That's another show. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, so is it okay if I read a page? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so it will reference a little bit of relationship stuff, but um, here we go. When you are not happy where you are and you are not quite sure if you want to leave or how to leave, you are in the meantime. It's a state of limbo. You are hanging on, ready to let go, afraid to fall, not wanting to hurt yourself, afraid you will hurt someone else. In the meantime, you pray the other person will let go first so that you will not feel guilty. The other person keeps dropping hints, letting you know that it's time to go. You deny it. Why? You don't know why but I can tell you that the meantime is fraught with don't knows and can't do's, don't know why I can't go, don't know why I should stay, don't know where I'm going, don't know how I'm going to get there, wherever that is. Ambivalence, confusion, reluctance, and paralysis are all characteristics of the meantime. If you knew the answers to these questions, you would, just, you would be just fine. In the meantime, you are many things, 
fine is probably not one of them. <clears throat> Life would be so much easier if when we hit a snag in a relationship, any relationship, we would stop, address it, and move ahead smoothly. smoothly. The truth is, in most cases, we could do just that. The reality is, we don't do it. We keep moving. We allow little insults to become raging angers, little arguments to become festering feuds, little pains to become deep wounds, and we keep moving. In many cases, we keep hurting. When the relationship at issue is an intimate, loving one, the attempt to move forward without addressing the pain only complicates matters, further poisoning the relationship. How can I stay and not get hurt? How can I go without hurting? You cannot answer these questions if you are in pain. What you do, what you can do is make the effort to discover the truth about love because, because it is the only thing that can help you move through the experience. That is really impactful. <clears throat> That's just one page <laughs> <laughs> of this whole entire book. Like I, I just read a couple, like just a few. People need love and we need to heal whatever it is within us to be able to get to the place where all we can do is just love people because mm -hmm. that's all people really need. Mm-hmm. Yeah, And uh, true. This, this book is, is just, it just takes you through one level at a time. And so in the beginning of the book, when it talks about really the darkest, the darkest moments you're experiencing is, um, you know, when you're kind of in the basement and you're stuck and you're in the dark and you just don't know what to do. And 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 it it can be any relationship. It doesn't have to be just an intimate one because every relationship will reflect back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right. So does she give you steps? Yes. Um, yeah. So um, <clears throat> some, so she'll, she'll explain to you exactly what in the meantime looks like um, and so okay. gives you specific examples, all the signs. Um, That's yeah. really good because I think sometimes people are, are so either caught up in denial and chaos around it that they, they don't know what to do and they don't even know how to identify exactly where they are. So that's perfect that she Yeah, has and that it even helps you address where you are. So, you know, even in the meantime, if you're in a relationship, so you might not be in the basement, but you still have those questions where you're like, do I stay, do I not go, do I, you know, it even talks about how, um, you know, if you're if you're in a relationship and you're not married, but you're sharing toothpaste and you're you know like in this confusing state and you don't know where things are going, you're in the meantime. You might not be in the basement, but you might be in a different level where you're like need to clarify or just where am I at? What do I want? How do I get there? Or how do I how do I improve it? Really, at the end of the day, is you know, it, and it talks a lot about um, having our needs and wants met but it's not the other person's responsibility, it's our own. Right, so then that's what I wanted to know is does she, uh, let me see how I can say this, does she tell you not just questions to ask yourself, but questions to ask your partner, or is it strictly about you? Um, I mean, you've already said that it is, but I'm just wondering about clarification if she does offer any insight into how to speak to your partner. No, and I okay. think this is because it all has <clears throat> to do with the internal reflection, right? Right, mm -hmm. and because even, but it does talk about. She does mention how you're gonna fight, and you have to fight, and it's the one that sticks around and fights with you. That's the one that you know is gonna help you move through all that stuff. Yeah, you know the kind of people who give up or let go and it's not fighting in an abusive physical or abusive way but it's the ones that are not going to put up with your crap yeah. that are like you know because we're projecting and sometimes it's our own stuff so when other when we're when we're fighting with our partners it's because we need to be heard we need to be validated and it's those that stick around with us and kind of you know fight with us and say we're doing good honey yeah. <laughs> right? right and it's like uh, you know it's, it's <coughs> We're constantly evolving, so we're always going to be changing. We're always going to be learning new things. We're always going to be triggered by something that's going on, and we go home and we don't realize, and they just amplify it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Without even realizing it, because you know they left their socks on the floor, and you know you're like, "Here's I'm just slob, right, or whatever." And you know it's defending yourself without justifying yourself too, right? So, mm -hmm. and. And it's work. Relationships take work, and it really is all about 
being finding the person that you want to support through their stuff like if you're going through something instead of you know me um, projecting my stuff on top of it because I'm defending you have to be more are you okay like what's going on like clearly you're upset about something like did I do something mm -hmm. no I'm fine right yeah clearly you're not fine it's like sometimes it takes digging and digging and digging for them to kind of finally realize that maybe oh it's not you it's just me and I have a boundary issue or I never said anything or <clears throat> so it's really about the people who you know go the distance to really help you resolve it even if it is your fault it's simple I'm sorry mm -hmm. right we don't intentionally go to destroy our loving partner relationships no right? no no I, I would think yeah no right? that wouldn't be my first choice no and so <clears throat> even with my with my husband now our our go-to is let's get back to the business of loving each other because that's what we're meant to be doing so how do we do that so mm. if we can't yet get to that sometimes one of us needs more space some of us needs more time but it's always mostly self-reflection at this point right mm -hmm. so it was lovely to when I picked up this book reading it that I was just like oh I'm so glad I've worked through so much of this stuff and gotten through it to get to a place where yeah it's all about the business of loving each other like I don't want to fight with you in mm -hmm. fact there's I would rather do anything else so you know if you can't figure it out and I can't figure it out let's leave it alone and just get back to it later or but if it's important like if it's a big deal then yeah you know we're gonna have at it in a loving respectful way but yeah. it's like these are these this is what's <clears throat> important to me I need you to hear this you need to be validated by the other person and so it ta really talks about um, that the people that stick around and do that with you that you know they're the keepers mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know years yeah so usually my next question is along the lines of who would you recommend this to I think you've already answered that so that would be anybody who's questioning where they're at in their relationship mm -hmm. does it necessarily speak to those who are not in a relationship but would like to be yes okay so especially if you're single and want a relationship and it's funny it talks about all the different you know you know if you're in common law but want to be married if you're married but don't want to be and you know you want to be common law or so look if you're single and haven't found the right person yet you know just honestly like any kind of relationship issue really can can be resolved in this and just um, and I had another thought on that but um, it left me it wasn't important but she is you know what really I even think that if you're stuck in your job if you just don't know you know because sometimes our problems are with our bosses mm -hmm. we hate our we love our job but we hate the people we work with mm -hmm. that's a relationship issue yeah right yeah so you know if you love your job but hate your boss or hate your colleagues or there's drama or there's just whatever it's just like okay I yeah, read this book <laughs> yeah because it helps you get back to where you need to be like how do you love these people how do you work with people who you necessarily normally wouldn't hang out personally or privately and how do you love them anyways like how do you just let go of the fact that okay yeah they're drama don't don't talk to them at lunch or what you know just to be able to step back and say okay I don't have to engage in that right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that you can continue to do what you love right right so tell me what is it you do mm -hmm. and who's your typical client um, so what I do is how you mentioned it before I'm an NLP practitioner and coach and so I help people break through the barriers that are holding them back in relationships business life health right because I have a fitness background and mm -hmm. I, I help people just do the unconscious work so we have problems and we have 10 areas of our life that you kind of touched upon that we can really dive into at a deeper level to see what's going on how do we improve you know our relationships our health mental emotional physical spiritual our career our finances then there's our true core and then there's our physical universe which is where kind of everything lives so how do we improve all those areas and then I help people just to you know the kind of one area that they're having the most difficulties in we focus on that and we do something called a breakthrough so it, so I love to work with you know people who are going through relationship issues and really issues with um, 
relationship with self because you know ironically this is you know this book is so significant to me because that was the journey that I was on and I mm -hmm. when I looked back at you know the kind of what was at the what was at the the common denominator in, in the, the last five or six clients that I've had is that they're all healing you know something a, a piece of love within themselves whether mm -hmm. a loss a death a loss of a child a, you know mm -hmm. relationship relationship with self a breakup they're healing a breakup or they're trying to reweave you know a 27 year marriage just trying to get back on track getting back into the business of loving each other and so you know after going through those same trials and tribulations myself and you know finally getting back to the top of my game because the divorce and separation can be devastating and I'm grateful I guess that, <laughs> and appreciate the journey that I went through to be able to go back to people and say okay you don't need to go through that you really don't need to go through that you know the grass is not greener on the other side it's kind of where you nourish it and where you water it but it's be more than water it's where you how you love it and everything else like that so you don't have to go that far you can actually it just takes some work so if they're willing to do the work then you know really a lot of relationships can be healed now do you ever do any mediation work <laughs> well, you would think I do because I call it refereeing <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I had th that ha that has come into my my thought process that I could do that, mm -hmm. but it would be I don't want to mediate a divorce because yeah. honestly I don't see the purpose at right. that point. Yeah, but I would love to mediate a. So what's the opposite of divorce? A re -com back, coming back together. Well, obviously I yeah. would think a couple that has recognized they have trouble, mm -hmm. they have issues, mm -hmm. and they don't know what to do, and they don't want to end up in the divorce That's right. Court, so they look for. That's right. And and the referee is often a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, I guess maybe that's. I was going to say that's what a marriage counselor is, but I really don't think so. And I think they need to be. Mm -hmm. I think that there needs to be some. So what is it really yeah. that you're looking at mm -hmm. that needs to change? Mm -hmm. And and they don't ask that question. No, and it's in both of them. And I, what I love best is that I get to be um, an advocate for both of them. Because most counselors, or when you go to marriage counseling, one deals with one and what someone deals with the other and they can't, they can't um, work together because mm -hmm. it's a conflict of interest. I'm like, how, they're, they're trying to get back together. So my, what I love the most is I get to be on your side and I get to be on the other person's side. Like I am on both your sides. My mm -hmm. goal is that you <clears throat> are happy, healthy, and wealthy at the end of this, and they are happy, healthy, and wealthy at the end of this. If that means together, great. If that means separate, great. But at least at the end of this, both of you walk away healthy, whole, heard, validated. And if it's not meant to be together, because some people are not necessarily always meant to be together, but I think that if people want to do the work to, um, you know, re-reave the fibers, it'll be stronger. Yeah. It'll be so much stronger. Mm hmm If people only, uh, and, and, and this isn't everybody, mm -hmm. obviously, there are domestic situations Absolutely. that need to end. Yes. But if people who really do feel that there's still some value, or even if they're saying, I don't want to break up my home because of the kids and everything the way it is, so how can I find my way back? Mm -hmm. If they knew that there was someone out there like you who did you know the I've, refereeing I've done it both ways right like yeah. some people who get divorced are like swear to god they're never gonna get married again mm -hmm. and I'm like never say never right like because mm -hmm. I had done the work so once I had done the work and I released and healed all that um, well you know I'm a lover at heart I'm, a, I'm meant to you know share my life with someone I'm meant to share my love with someone like we can't Lo we can love ourselves, but our love amplifies when we give it and share it with other people. Yes. Right? So yeah. we experience at a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, for me, I was like, yeah, I really, you know, want I wanted a relationship. I didn't get married in the first place to, you know. So, you know, different dynamics and, you know, there's whatever, children involved. But, um, you know. But the more you learn about yourself, the more you know mm -hmm. what to carry into that next relationship hopefully marriage that's right yeah and what we don't heal and she talks about this in the book what we don't heal we take with us yeah so if we don't do the work and you break in a relationship and you don't do the work 
it's going to show up in your next relationship. And, mm -hmm. and then you see that it's not the other person, it's always you. Mm -hmm. Because where you go, there you are. Your problems follow you. John Cabot's in, wherever you go, there you are. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's just like, you know, to in order to, you're just going to see the same stuff. And I did in my second relationship too. I was like, whoa, this is like really familiar. Like, why is it coming up? I'm like, oh, because, you know, it wasn't him, it was me, right? Yeah, and always the, the common denominator. And that's a hard pill to swallow later on when you're just like, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know. You gotta write a letter. <laughs> it, it does. It really does take two, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. it, it does. And so I'm grateful because, and I'm appreciative because I wouldn't have been able to do what I can do for other people. And it allowed me to take, you know, my relationship to the next level, one that really I needed to have in order to support me <clears> to, <throat> to get to this place where I'm able to help people at that level. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you do, um, because of your, your fitness background, do you do exercising with them? Do you encourage that? Do you give them homework? So I don't do physical, I don't instruct physically anymore. I retired that in 2015. Um, I found that I could be way more effective holding people accountable in different ways to get healthy. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, it's really our mindset that we need to exercise more than our bodies first, right. and then everything follows suit after that. Mm -hmm. But um, so yes, yeah, so absolutely, they get homework, especially if I work with a couple, single, even single people, when I work with them or single in the sense that I'm just working one on one with them, there's always homework. Mm -hmm. Always just, but it's not horrible, wretched, like school essays and stuff like that. But it's, you know, it is, you know, different type of things to understand, you know, who you are and what your needs and wants are at a deeper level so that you can figure that out. Because if we don't know what we need and want, then, you know, anything will do. Mm -hmm. And have you got any upcoming events or anything that you're working on? Um, well, other than, you know, being able to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I'm doing Nutrition Plus. I'm, I'm doing a, yeah. a workshop at Nutrition Plus on Tuesday. And it's all about how to weather through the storm, you know, and mm -hmm. skills and tools to get through, you know, kind of the dark and stormy nights. I'm definitely going to bring the book with me <coughs> and recommend it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, um, but, uh, you know, I've always got stuff in the works, so check my website. Cool, and that right. everything's and that listed there. Yes. running across the mm -hmm. bottom of the screen, yes. so that's super. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I just want to say thank you so much for oh, coming today, Lori. I really appreciate your time. We've been talking to Lori Bertoni about Elania Van Sant's In the Meantime, and this is about um, getting your relationship with yourself together so that you can get your relationship with another, with the world, uh, back together again. And uh, so I just want to thank you and you'll be able to reach Lori. Uh, the information is across the bottom of the screen. Thank you so much for joining me here today on Epiphanies and I hope you'll see us, uh, come and see us again next week. Thank you.